Hey guys, just before we get into the lesson, I just want to let you know that you can catch these live on YouTube uh, every Tuesday from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. in the UK time. And that means you can be more interactive, you can ask your questions and they'll be answered. Okay, so without further ado, let's get into the lesson. Okay, so welcome to the first of my kind of weekly free online maths sessions for GCSE. Um, so just to be clear is um, with the GCSE content, we're starting from year 10. And in year 10, the foundation and higher syllabuses are basically the same. But just for kind of future reference, I'm going to make sure I note down which topics are high, which ones are foundation. So the ones we're going to do today are place values. I'm going to do everything about time and include some exam paper questions at the end. So for these topics, it is both higher and foundation. You need to know, need to know these both uh, thoroughly. So when we come to place values, um, essentially what this means is if we have a number, so let's make a fairly easy number, so 123. Each of these individual digits has a different value. And when I say the number 123, you can see what those values are. This is the same as writing 123. Okay, so what we can see from here is that this one corresponds to 100. Its value is 100. This 2 corresponds to a value of 20, and this 3 corresponds to a value of 3. So we actually have special names for each of these columns. We call, for right over here, the 123. The first number, so the ones are just like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 0, we call those units. The twos, so we have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 80, and 90. We call those the tens column. And for this value, we have the hundreds. So 100, 200, 300, and so on. And as I add more digits, so if I were to add, let's say, a three in front, this would be the thousands, because it's 3,123. If I were to add a four in front, that would be the tens of thousands, because I say 40,000, uh, 43,000 in this case, 123. Okay, so all it's doing is, essentially, is, give me one second. So all it's doing is kind of adding the value. So it tells me what the value is. And you can always see what the place value is by simply changing what, or reading out the number in four. So perfect for this, it's relatively simple, okay? So for example, uh, when it gets more complicated is when we have something like, let's say 23.456. This becomes slightly trickier, okay? Because when we read out this number, we don't say 23.456, right? That would be incorrect. We say 23.456. So what are the place values there? Well, again, we can break down this number we say 23, so 20 plus the 3, and then all we need to do is include the decimal point. So this 4 here is actually 0 0.4, right? This 5 is actually 0 0.05, and this 6 is 0 0.06, so 0, 0, 006, okay? So. This is quite an important thing. Uh, we're actually going to go on to some exam questions now. So keep in mind, they can literally ask you, one of the questions is, what is the value of the two in 123? And for one mark, you can just say 20. You just write two zero, okay? Likewise, in this question, they may give you this number and say, what is the place value, or what is the value, both the same thing, of the five? And all you do is write, it's 0 0.05. Okay, so the reason why that can be useful is it's simply put, it's just a one mark question that they can give you. That's it, higher and foundation paper will both have in the first few questions, they will both have a kind of question where it says, what is the place value of? Okay, so I think it'd be good to show you some of these exam questions now. So if we just go down, we have a bunch of one mark questions. Okay, so for this, using the kind of explanations we've just done, write down the value of the eight in 583. Well, if I read the number out, 583, the value here is just 
80. The 8 represents 80. It doesn't just represent 8. Okay? So I'll just give it two seconds. Uh, do any of you have any questions? So just for anyone watching on this on YouTube later, I'm just making sure I check in the chat to see if anyone has any questions about that. Looks like it's all okay. Cool. So for question two, uh, again, write down the value of the 5 in the number 583.2. So because I'm reading this out to you, I already know the answer. The 5, when I look at that in the number, I say 500. So what's the value? 500. Now obviously in your exam, you can't read out the question out loud, but you can read it in your head. Even mouth it along if you want to. Okay. This point 2 doesn't change anything. The 5 is the first digit, so what does that digit represent? It's 500. Okay, it's in the hundreds column. Okay. If we uh, keep going on, write down the value of the 3 in the number 3091. Again, because I'm reading it, I know what the answer is already. It's 3000. So it's in the thousands column. It's 3, 1, 2, 3. Okay, so I've just done a few questions pretty quickly because honestly, when you read the question out, it becomes very self explanatory. So just so you know for your exam, it's generally one mark in one minute. So you need to be able to answer each one mark question in under 60 seconds. This takes maybe three seconds, okay? But I'm just gonna give you a second. Do any of you have any questions? No? Perfect, well let's keep going, let's just blast through it. So the next one, write down the value of the two in the number 6024. Well, again, I've read it out. 6000, so it's not that, and 20. Four. The two represents 20. Okay. Question five. It says, write down the value of the seven in the number 204.7. Well, this is the hard one, isn't it? This is where it gets a bit tricky. Because I don't say 204 and seven tenths. Okay. I know it's in the tenths column because it's the first one after the decimal point. So it's the tenths column. Okay. So... The seven just represents, well, all you have to do is count the number of decimal point. Uh, sorry, not the decimal. How many after the decimal point is it? Well, it's one after the decimal point. So I'm going to write zero because I don't care about the rest of these numbers. Point seven. Right, that's it. Okay. The next few questions are a bit slightly different. Okay, but that's totally fine. Um, just so you're aware, if this question, for example, was 204.07, what is the value of the 7? Then all you do is you ignore everything except the 7 and you include everything after the decimal point, 0 0.07 there, yeah? because it's one, two points. If it was 204.17, what's the value of the 7? Well, I'm looking at the 7. It's one, two places after the decimal point, so I need to just make everything a 0. So 0, 0, there are two zeros because it's two after the decimal point. So 0 0.07, done. Okay. Nice and easy. Even though these are two different numbers, they have the same answer for this question because they're looking at the place value. If you were to divide this into columns, yeah, they have the same value. Okay, so I'm just explaining in a few different ways. If you get it, that's totally fine. You can ignore what I just said, okay? Now here's the next part of the kind of figures and numbers and place value that they can ask you to do. So question six, write down a five digit number. So we want to have one, two, three, four, five values. Okay. That has three as its thousands digit. You can only use the digit three once. Okay. So again, this might sound complicated. So do what I've done. So what I've done here is I've drawn X's. Okay. Now, if I look at the columns, this is the tens. This is the hundreds. This is the thousands. Uh, sorry, that's the units, that's the tens, that's the hundreds, this is the thousands, this is the tens of thousands. It's telling me the number three has to be the thousands digit. So I'm going to replace the X with the three. Okay? So again, just go over it again, because I did stumble over that. The first X is the tens, then it's the hundreds, then it's the thousands, so units, tens, hundreds, then it's the thousands, then it's the tens of thousands. The thousands has to be a three. What about the other digits? Well, what are the other criteria? Well, you can only use the digit three once. That's it, okay? Which means every other number is any number except zero and three, okay? Well, the zero, you can't put a zero in front. It's not a five digit number. Every number has to start with a number that isn't zero, okay? Unless zero. So let's pick a number between one and nine. So can I pick a number? 
So anything that isn't three, yep, four, cool. What about the digits after? Well, it could just be zero, 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 or it could be five, three, one, two, four. It could be five, three, two, seven, eight. It could be seven, three, one, two, etc. There's loads and loads of combinations you can have, okay? So all you need to do is pick those values, and we did, so five, three, one, two, four. So again, my method for this question is to draw X's for the number of digits. There are five digits, so X, 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 X. Then it says the thousands has to be a three. The thousands is the fourth X, okay? Because it goes units, tens, hundreds, thousands. That has to be a three, so I filled it in as a three, okay? That's literally all I've done, okay? And then after that, I've just kind of filled it in as you would normally, okay? So, let's use the exact same logic. Write down a six digit number, pause. One, two, three, four, five, six. That has an eight as its hundreds digit. So hundreds, this is units, tens, hundreds, so let's put an eight underneath that X, okay? You can only use a digit eight once. Okay, let's pick a bunch of random numbers, yeah? We have, let's say, three, seven, two, one, four. I picked a bunch of numbers that weren't eight. And I can't start with a zero either in this case, okay? And I'm done. The only thing that matters is that eight being in the hundreds column. Okay. So, next one, write down a four digit number. So again, I'm gonna pause after reading four digit number. Four digit number, so how many X's do I need? One, two, three, four. That's it. Okay, now let's read the next set. That has seven as its tens digit. Tens, so this here is units, this is tens, so the seven has to go there. Now fill in the other three digits with any number, but you can't start with a zero, okay? The reason why we can't start with a zero, let's say a number like this. Is that a number? It's not. It might be a phone number, but it's not a number, okay? So anything except a zero in the front, let's put nine, because I haven't used nine yet. Uh, second digit, let's put a two, and let's put a one at the end. Yeah, that's all you have to do, okay? The last type of question is they may give you kind of a value like write down two million in figures, or they'll give you figures and say write it in words. Okay, so for example, they might say, here's your number here, 9271. Write that in words. You'd have to write 9,271. That's it. Okay? So, that's what you have to do. So, 2 million in figures. Okay, so first off, you'd write the 2. Now, millions have 6 digits. Okay? So, they have 6 zeros. And they have 7 digits in total. So, all we need to do is do... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so 2 million, when it says million, it means it has 6 zeros or it has 7 digits in total. So 7 digits because we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, hope that all makes sense. Let me just give a second. Anyone have any questions? Perfect, okay, it seems like we're good. That's all we really need for place value. Okay, it's not really that all that tricky. Okay, so let's go on to time problems where it gets a bit more interesting. So never mind, there's another question. Oopsies. So 5.3 million in figures. So what I'm going to do again, millions have seven digits. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Five goes at the front because it's the first value there. And the next digit is going to be this thing after the decimal point. So it's going to be three. And the rest of it is just going to be zeros. Okay? So if I said 47,000, everything after the 47 is just zeros. Okay? So, again, we've started with something pretty easy, um, pretty basic. Um, might be a bit tedious, might be a bit boring. So... The lucky thing is that this is all we have to do with this. This is normally the first question or two in the um, exam paper, in the in your paper one. Okay, it's non-calculator, obviously. And you'll only have to do it once. So if you understand this, we'll never come across it again. 
so it's not going to be uh, boring forever. So let's move on to something that's slightly less boring, and let's talk about time. So time comes up a lot in the word problems, okay? So these word problems can be uh, four mark questions, three mark questions, or anything like that. But the basics, the absolute basis of it, is you need to be able to change between hours into minutes, and from minutes into hours. Okay? That's the basics of it. Now, that might sound very, very easy, very, very simple, very, very basic. But the thing is, is it does trip up a lot of students when they come across those four mark questions because they make small mistakes. Okay? So if I gave you what, how much, how many minutes are in an hour, one hour is 60 minutes. Okay? So if I said what two hours was, what you'd do is you'd say, well, how do I get from one to two? Well, I times by two. And again, you can only times or divide when you're doing conversions, okay? How do I get from this to this? Well, whatever I do to one side, I need to do to the other, so I times by two. 60 times by two is just 120. I'm going to write mins instead. Okay, the way I did 60 times two quite quickly is you just do six times two is 12. I removed a zero, so I add the zero back afterwards. Okay, so again, fairly basic. The tricky part is when we have to go from minutes to hours. Okay, so if I asked you to do 120 minutes into hours, you can now easily see it's just two hours. Okay, but what if I said 180 minutes? Okay, well you can use this original part here by saying how do I go from 60 to 180? Well, what you need to do is do 180 divided by 60. Now I'm going to show you a little trick. Write it as a fraction. If there are zeros at the end of the number on the top and the bottom of the fraction, you can just cancel them through. So this is the same as doing 8 divided by 6. 8 divided by 6, so if I write that out fully, is just 3. So the answer is 3 hours. Okay. So far, that's probably not too tricky. Okay. All you need to be able to do is convert between hours and minutes. Okay, It's a fairly basic uh, skill to have, but again, it trips up a lot of students every single year when they come to do their actual papers, especially in non-calculator, but even in calculator as well. Okay, So to prevent some boredom that might be setting in from seeing me multiply by 2 and 3, let's have a look at some exam questions to see what kind of stuff they can ask you, and then hopefully that'll make it a bit in more interesting for you. So if I go down to the exam questions, starts off fairly easy. Okay, so 120 minutes into hours. Okay, so we did that before. What I would do is write one hour equals 60 minutes. Then I'd write 120 minutes. Yeah. How do I go from 60 minutes to 120 minutes? What do I time 60 by to get 120? We did it just now, so I'm not going to make you do it again. All you do is you times by 2. Okay? And so whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other side. If it's... Okay. Perfect. It looks like that makes sense. So let's do that. Let's do times by 2. 1 times 2 is 2 hours. So my answer for this question is two. And i would also write hours just to be fairly clear and concise with it, okay? Fairly standard question, okay? Now, how many, the other way to do this, by the way, if you're interested, in, is if I know that one hour is 60 minutes, to work out how many hours are in however many minutes, all I'd need to do is do 120 divided by 60. So 120 over 60, Cancel the zeros. 12 over 6 is equal to 2. I'll get the exact same answer, okay? So that's one way that you can do it. 
for this part, changing hours into minutes. Okay, to change hours into minutes, you do the exact same thing. So one way you can do it is you can do what I said before. So one hour equals 60 minutes. So then if you do four hours, one into four, you just times by four. So what I need to do to the other side is I need to also times by four. 60 times four, that's pretty tricky. So what I can do is do six times four, six times four, so double it, double it again, we get 24, and then just add on the zero, okay? So six times four is 24, so that means 60 times four is 240. The other way you can do it is double 60 and double uh, the answer to that as well. So 60 times two is 120. Double it again, you get 240. So 240 minutes. Okay. So again, I know this might seem a bit boring at the moment. Uh, question five looks a bit more interesting, but three and four also a bit more challenging. We're getting through some of the grunt work early so that we can um, ensure that we're okay for the later topics, which are, I'm not going to say they're fun and lie to you, but they are more interesting, a bit more engaging. Okay, and then when we come on to doing some actual exam papers, it's going to be a lot more exciting. Okay, so for the minute, we have to do uh, something that's slightly boring. Okay. Question three, we have work out the difference in minutes between 55 minutes and one and three quarter hours. So this is slightly tricky. Yeah, bit tricky. We have 55 minutes here. We have one and three quarter hours. I can't, so when it says work out the difference, what they're saying is we need to basically subtract them. Okay, that's what they're essentially saying here. So when we want to do that, we can't subtract minutes from hours and hours from minutes straight away. We need to make them the same unit. Okay, so we either need to change 55 minutes into hours or we need to change hours into minutes. Now, there is a hint as to what we should do. It says in minutes, so we should change everything into minutes, okay? Also, 55 minutes into hours is very annoying to do, so let's avoid doing that. So we have 55 minutes. And we have one and three quarter hours. Okay, well, one hour is equal to 60 minutes. So we have that one hour here. This one is equal to that. Now I just need to do three quarters of an hour. Okay. Now we need to take three quarters of a number. So this is invoking the fractions of amount section of your kind of course that you've done up until now. So an hour is 60 seconds, uh, sorry, 60 minutes. So we have three quarters of 60. The way we can do this, there are two ways. We can divide by four and then times by three, which is tricky. Or we can find what one quarter is. To take a quarter of a number, all you're doing is simply dividing by four. So 60 divided by four gives me 15. Then three quarters is going to equal three times 15, which equals 45 minutes, okay? But we're looking for one and three quarters. So if we do one and three quarter, that's going to be the 60 minutes originally, plus the 45 minutes we have afterwards, which is 105 minutes. So if we're looking at the difference between 55 minutes and one and three quarter hours, all we're doing is subtracting the big number 105 minus 55, it gives me 50 minutes. And that is our answer. Now it's a two mark question, so it's quite a lot. Hopefully you can see where we get that value from. So do you guys have any questions so far? Okay, just give you a few seconds to copy that down if you're taking notes. Okay. 
Perfect. more seconds to make sure that's all copied out and perfect so let's go on with the next one so I stopped for that because we need to actually kind of get rid of these notes for a second and let's move on to the next question so question number four we have worked out the difference between two hours and 25 minutes and one and a half hours so what I would say is how did I get 45 minutes? Okay, so for 45 minutes in the previous question, so if I just undo all we had. So when we took one quarter of 60 in this step over here, I divided 60 by four, okay? And the reason why is because when you're taking a quarter of something, all you do is you divide by the number on the bottom, okay? The next stage is because I didn't actually want one quarter, Because I didn't actually want one quarter, I wanted three quarters, I multiplied it by three. Okay. When I multiplied by three, I got 45. Okay, so if I do this again. So work out the difference in minutes between two hours and 25 minutes and one and a half hours. Okay, so it says in minutes again. So all we need to do, you're welcome, is change two hours, so two hour and 25 minutes. Let's change that just into minutes for now. So two hours, all we're doing is doing two times 60. The reason why we're doing two times 60 is because there are 60 minutes in an hour. So that gives me 120. Then we're adding on these 25 minutes. And I get an answer of 145 mins. Okay, fairly standard so far. So one and a half hours, again, this shouldn't be too bad, one and a half hours. This one is going to be one times 60, so 60 minutes. Half of an hour, we're going to do half of 60. Half of 60 means we do 60 divided by two, which is just 30. So in total, we have 60 plus 30, which is 90. minutes okay so we need to work out the difference so you take whenever you're taking the difference in something what you do is you take the big number and you subtract it from the small number so 145 minus 90 so to do that you can use uh, either long subtraction or you can use just good old fashioned kind of mental math so it's going to be 55 minutes as well okay so whichever way you want to do it. If you want to do it the other way, let's do one, four, five, subtract 90. Five take away zero is five. Four take away nine we can't do, so we need to borrow from the one, make that a zero, and make this 14. 14 take away nine is five, and that's a zero in front. So that would also get you the exact same answer. Perfect. So are there any questions regarding that? So again, I'm hoping, I'm really sorry that this first lesson is a bit boring, but there is a lot of grunt work we need to do before we get into the more um, meaty stuff, I want to say, but that sounds a bit weird. Into the stuff that's a bit more interesting, okay? So I'm hoping that my voice isn't boring you to death yet. But this is kind of essential work. The next two questions are slightly more interesting, the next few questions, okay? They're a bit more involved. Okay, so even though there are only two marks, you can probably see just from reading question five, if you haven't, if you're waiting, it's a bit more involved, there's a bit more to it, it's a bit more interesting, it's a bit more challenging, okay? So we're gonna get all of this done and then we're gonna start doing more complicated exam questions, okay? But again, this is foundation and higher tier, just for those of you that joined a bit late, okay? So this covers foundation and higher for this lesson because you need to know how to do it, both of them, okay? 
So I'll give you two more seconds. Anyone have any questions? Just me. Okay, it looks like everyone is okay with that. Good. So again, a lot of this you may have covered in uh, year seven, eight, and nine, but it's a good recap. Again, it's the beginning of the school term, so you might be just completely forgotten what maths is at the moment. So next question. Lots of words, which means I'm scared. So she left her home at 10.40 a.m. I'm going to highlight all of the important bits. So 10.40 a.m. She walked from her home to the shop. I don't care that she goes to the shop, but it took her 14 minutes, which I am interested in. Again, with maths, we're looking at the numbers. Okay, I don't care about the words. She was at the shop for 10 minutes. She then walked from the shop to her friend's house. I don't really care, but it took her 20 minutes to go to her friend's house. 22 minutes, sorry. What time did she arrive? Okay, so this is where we're starting to add time together. Okay, so this can be a bit tricky because essentially what I'm doing is I'm doing 10.40 a.m. and then I'm adding on 14 minutes and then adding on another 10 minutes and then adding on another 22 minutes. And the thing is, when this goes to the next hour, students get confused all the time. Okay, so take it step by step. Don't just do it all at once. Slow down. Okay, don't do this like column addition. Okay, it's not, not going to work. You might get the right answer, but you might also panic and get the wrong answer. So let's do it this way. Okay? So, 10.40. 14 minutes to walk to the shop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do work out what time she gets to the shop. Okay? So 10.40. From adding on another 14 minutes, all I need to do is make that 10.54. I'm just adding the columns, okay? The biggest number you're going to see here is 59 because there are 60 minutes in an hour. When we get to 60, we need to increase this number by one, okay? Which is what we're going to do next. So, she was at the shop for 10 minutes. So I'm actually going to get rid of this. Just give me a bit more breathing room. So at the moment, it's 10.54, right? We've agreed on that. We're adding on another 10 minutes. Again, make sure your columns are in line, okay? Which is nice. If I add 10 to this, I'm going to get 1064. Has anyone seen a time like that? No? Because it's crap. <laughs> it's not it's not correct. Okay? So we can't write this. And this is where students get confused. Okay? We're going up to 60 instead of a hundred like we do with everything else. Okay? So how much can I add? So how much can I add to 54 before I have to increase the hour? Well, I can add six before I get to 60. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to say, if I add six to this, I get 11 a.m. Just gonna wait to make sure you guys get that. Why do I get 11? Well, 54 plus six is 60 which means I need to reset that down to zero because there are 60 minutes in an hour. I've gone up by one hour, okay? Now, because, oh, that was horrifying. I apologize. So, <laughs> because I've used six minutes out of the 10 minutes, I have another four to use. So when I add this together, I get 11.04. So she gets to the shop, sorry, she's at the shop until 11.04, a.m. Is that okay? Yeah? Yeah. So in your notes, I would recommend highlighting. Uh, the reason why I'm not is because I'm not that great at using OneNote at the moment, but for the next lesson, I'm going to make sure I'm, I'm highlighting stuff a bit more frequently. Um, otherwise, I need to set up hotkeys and all that fun stuff. I know, I'm very prepared. But, 11.04 a.m. is when she reach, reaches, sorry, when she wants to leave the shop, okay? So, so far, we've gone from, this is the initial step here. She then walks to the shop, which when she arrives at 10.54 a.m., that's step two. We then did this maths over here to reach step three. She's now leaving the shop at 11.04 a.m., okay? Now it takes her 22 minutes to walk to her friend's house. So again, let's do 11.04 plus 22. Now am I in any danger of reaching 60? No. 
So I don't actually care. All I need to do is do 11 over 4 add 22. That's 11, 26. Yeah. That's it. The other thing that might be annoying, by the way, is if we got to 12, we would have to then write PM instead of AM. They're very, very particular, okay? Make sure you're writing AM and PM. If you're not sure what AM and PM are, from midnight until midday, it's AM. And from midday till midnight, it's PM, okay? So that's midnight, that's midday. So everything between those is going to be AM, everything after is going to be PM, okay? So, hopefully that makes sense. Again, do it in steps like I did, okay? Make sure you do it in steps. That will ensure that you aren't getting kind of confused, you aren't losing out on... You aren't making mistakes, essentially, because by the time you do the GCSE exam, you're going to be able to add these numbers, right? You can probably add the numbers now. The problem is making mistakes. You need to make sure your work is nice and neat and you're calm and collected and careful because if you aren't, you're going to make mistakes and when you make mistakes, you lose marks, okay? So I'll give you two seconds just to make sure that that is all okay with you. Perfect. So just waiting, does anyone have any questions? Perfect. Let's go on to the next question. Whoops. The film starts at 7.45 p.m. It lasts 98 minutes. What time does the film finish? Okay. This is where things are going to get a bit tricky. We're going to have to do this in many, many steps. Okay. Ah, so, uh, Rachel, uh, where to find the questions? The questions, I'm going to upload this whole thing as a PDF with the working out and the questions separately, um, and you'll be able to download it. Okay, so it should be in the link of the uh, live stream after it's been uploaded to YouTube, okay? Perfect. So, film starts at 7.45pm, last 98 minutes. When does, uh, what time does the film finish? So, 90 minutes is an hour and a half and a bit. So you could do it that way if you wanted to, but I would actually recommend doing it the way we did in the previous question where we add bits separately. So what I'm going to do here is, we start at 7.45, the PM won't matter for now, okay? And what we're trying to add is 98 minutes. So the way I would do this, I'll do it in many, many, many steps, okay? So what I'll do first is, what can I add to 45 to make 60? Well, I can do add 15 instead. So I'm going to do that. If I add 15 minutes to 7.45, it brings me to 8 o'clock. Okay? And that's going to be plus, and then do 98 minus 15. 8 minus 5 is 3. 9 minus 1 is 8. So we have 83 minutes left. Okay? So, I'm just going to check. Is what I just did, does it make sense? Are you okay with it? Does it? Is it all okay? What I did is I took 15 away from this number and this number to make my... Well, sorry, I added 15 to the top number, minus it from the bottom, because I can make my numbers a bit easier to work with. Okay? So what you want to do is take out chunks. Take out 15 minutes. Okay? Now, 83 is bigger than 60. Okay? I know, right? I'm a maths teacher. 83 is bigger than 60. Which means I can take away 60, I can add another 60 onto here, so I'm going to add 60. Just 60. If I add 60, it takes me straight to 9pm. And then what I'm going to do is do 83 minus 60. That makes it 3. And I'm still left with 23 minutes. Okay? Still left with 23 minutes. Now 23 is less than 60. Again, big brain. So all I need to do is add 0 to 23. So if you pull out your calculators, 0 plus 23 is 23. So we have 9.23 p.m. 
Whoops. That's it. Do it in steps. Okay? So the answer to this question is 9, 23 p.m. Okay. Hopefully that's nice and easy. Hopefully that makes sense. All you do is take it step by step. So it's two marks, which means you have two minutes. So 120 seconds to do it. If I were working this out, I would still work it out this way, by the way. So if someone did ask me in real life or I did an exam paper and someone said, OK, film starts at 7.45, 98 minutes, how would I do it? In my head or on paper, I would first off add 15 minutes, then add a 60, then add the 28, uh, 3 that's left. OK, so it's the best way to do it without making mistakes. Again, you have 120 seconds. That's a long time. So give you a second just to copy all of that information out if you need it. And if anyone needs any questions, you can just ask them. Okay, so I think that that makes sense. Okay, so I'm hoping that makes sense. Uh, there are no questions that I can think of and that I'm seeing. So what we'll do is we get rid of this uh, working out for now. Yeah. Perfect. So this one, um, this, by the way, this kind of question, Natalie drives from London to Sheffield or insert someone traveling from somewhere to somewhere. It's really common. It comes up every year. OK, they'll either ask about speed or what time they arrive or both. OK, so this is actually a question that is I would I would be willing to bet is going to show up on your actual GCSE paper. OK, so, you know, hopefully that excites you a bit, maybe a tiny bit. Anyways, Natalie drives from London to Sheffield. I don't particularly care. She leaves at 9.15 a.m. Okay, that's useful information. She drives for two and a quarter hours. That's useful information, not the fact that she drives, but the fact that it's two and a quarter hours before stopping for a break. Takes a break for 20 minutes. Takes another 85 minutes to reach Sheffield. Okay, honestly, you can just read the numbers. Okay, but just kind of take the context because there can be multiple parts to the, these questions. They might say, how long was her break? Or how long did it take her to get to this place or whatever? So, guess what we're going to do? We're going to do the exact same thing, but there is a small saving grace, okay? So I'm gonna label this. So this two and a quarter hours is step one. The 20 minutes is step two. The rest of the thing is step three, okay? This might make it easier for you guys to see the working out. So step one. The thing about two and a quarter hours. So again, we're just looking at this question. So it starts at 9.15 a.m. She drives for two and a quarter hours. Okay, so this two and a quarter hours, what we need to do is add it on to 9.15 a.m. Plus two and a quarter hours. Okay, so again, this is an actual exam question. This will show up in your actual GCSEs because it shows up every single year. Okay. So to add the two and a quarter hours, you have a few options. Okay, the first thing I would do, I wouldn't convert this into minutes yet because I can add the two whole hours to these whole hours here. What's nine add two? It's 11. So now I have 11.15 plus a quarter of an hour, which makes it slightly easier. Okay, so a quarter of an hour, how do we work that out? Well, you might just instinctively know it's 15 minutes. Or, if you don't, an hour is 60 minutes, so we're doing a quarter of 60. So we're basically doing 60 divided by 4, which is 15. So what we're doing is actually adding 15. So 11.15 add 15 is going to give me 11.30 a.m. Cool. That's the end of the first stage. The second stage, 
She then takes a break for 20 minutes because she's lazy. So we have 11.30 plus 20. Well, that's easy. Just add the numbers. If I add 20, I know it's not going to reach 60. So all I need to do is do 11.50 a.m. Perfect. I hope that's okay. Now, part three. Part three is kind of like the entirety of the previous question, okay? So for this question, what we need to, for this part, what we need to do is do 1150 plus 85 minutes. So again, 85 is bigger than 60. So what I can do is add on a whole hour or I can add on 10 minutes. So what can I add to 50 to make 60? Well, I can add 10. So what I'm going to do, add 10 to this would give me, or bring me to 12, zero, zero. Subtract 10 from here, we have 75. Now 75 is bigger than 60, so I can add on a whole extra hour, just like we did in the previous part, and we get 13.00. So you might be wondering why I'm writing 13. It's just for consistency at the moment, but you might want to reset that to one, because as you know, numbers go from zero to 12 on the 24 hour clock, oh sorry, on the analog clock. And we're left with 15, so we're going to be 13.15. That's a 24 hour clock. To change it into a regular analog clock, what you do is you subtract 12 and it makes it 1.15. But instead of AM, we're writing PM. Okay. Give you a few seconds to just make sure that that's all okay. Make sure you understand it. Hopefully that makes sense. It doesn't look like there are any questions so far. So I say we uh, plow on with the next one. Perfect. So last question. Uh, and then I wanted, to, I left some time at the end of the stream just to kind of A, take questions from you guys if you have any questions, and B, to give you some kind of housekeeping stuff, okay? Now this is a three part question. Again, this is very, very common for your GCSE exam. It's going to Uh, for your GCSE exam, they tend to put things in multiple parts. And again, that means the total number of marks can be a bit bigger, okay? So these timetables, again, I'm willing to bet my house that you'll get one of these in your actual exam. You have three papers, so I'm cheating a bit, but you will definitely get one, okay? So you need to be able to read them. So let's go through how to read them first. So let's not start the clock on the actual uh, time for the question yet. So what it's saying, uh, this timetable is saying that this particular, this is a train, so this train here, it starts off at London St Pancreas at 0540. So what you're going to see is that these always are based on the 24 hour clock. 24 hour clock is where you have, you don't have AM or PM, it just goes from 000, and then you'd have, you know, 0100, 0200, all the way up to 1200 and then it goes to 1300 and then it goes all the way back to the biggest it can be is 2359 and then it starts back off at 0000. Okay, so with bus and train timetables or whatever, they will always be in the 24 hour clock. How can you tell? Well, one, if you see a number that's 13 or bigger as the first two digits, it's definitely in the 24 hour clock. The other way you can tell is there are four digits, right? They put a zero in front. So that's another way to tell. Perfect. So to read this, it starts off at 5.40 in the morning at London St Pancras, then it arrives at Ebb's Fleet at 5.58, then 6.24 and then 9.17. Then there's another train at 6.18. Okay, then it skips Ebb's Fleet apparently, then 6.55. Then there's another train. So each column is a separate train. Each row is a destination. 
hoping that's all groovy, so to speak. So it says, a train leaves London, St Pancras, at 6.18. How many minutes did it take to reach Paris? Okay, well, let's look at the timetable. We're looking at this column. Okay, so it starts at 6.18. Now, what time does it reach Paris? Well, I told you that each row is a destination, each column is a train. Well, the column is here. The row, let's see Paris, well, it's not this one, it's not Ebbsfleet, it's not Ashford, it is Paris. So we're looking at this row here, the one that I'm highlighted, and this column. So we're looking at this time here. So it arrives at 0947. Okay. I just threw a bunch of information at you, blew your mind with my genius. So I'll give you a second to process that. Does anyone have any questions? Do, 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 do. Five, four, three, two, one. Perfect. It doesn't look like there are any questions. So I do have to give it a few seconds because there's a delay on the stream. But yeah, let's have a look. So we need to do 947 minus uh, 618. Always the bigger minus the smaller. Okay. So can we just minus this as normal? Yes, we can. But then we need to change it into minutes. Okay. So what we're going to do first is start from left to right. We can't do seven minus eight, so let's borrow one from the four. Can we do 17 minus eight? Yes, sir, we can. 17 minus eight is nine. Good. Three minus one is two. Nine minus three is that. So it takes three hours and 29 minutes. Is that what the question's asking me? No, it's asking me for minutes, not hours and minutes. Okay, small, I've forgotten how to speak. It's a small difference, but it is a big one, okay? You won't get the marks if you're at three hours and 29 minutes. So I need to change three hours into minutes. So all we need to do is do three times 60, which is 180. And then add on the 29 minutes, 180, 29, slap that together. We have nine. Uh, this will give me zero and one, and that will give me two. 209 minutes. Okay, so you can copy that down for part A. Perfect. So that's a one mark question. In my opinion, that's actually a bit low. It should probably be two marks because there are a few steps. You need to find the spot on the table, then you need to minus it, then you need to convert it. There are two kind of mathematical steps there. So honestly, that's a bit bit annoying of them to do. do, 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 do. Let's get down to business. Okay, let's get rid of that because we're going to be doing part B. So probably should have labeled it. Part B, what is the difference in minutes between the time it takes for the 540 train and the 618 train from London St. Pancras to reach Paris? So I did an uh-oh, I should have recorded that this is 209 minutes. So yeah, this is actually a good uh, point for me to make uh, in terms of exam technique. Generally speaking in part B, they use the answer to part A, okay? so. Obviously, in the actual exam, you won't be deleting your answers. Um, so, yeah, we need to use part B in part A. Okay. So, difference between that and the 618 train. So, we've done that. What about the 540 train? Well, if, again, if we're looking at this column now and that row, we're looking at this value. So, we've got 540 to 917. So what we're going to be doing again is we're going to do, whoops, 917 minus 540. So again, we can do this, seven minus zero, I can definitely do that. One minus four I can't do. Borrow one from the nine. 11 minus four is seven. Um, yeah, so the reason why we got that is this one's actually slightly trickier, okay? So I wanted to demonstrate why we can't do this. I can't have 77 minutes. 
Okay. It is right to go back down to eight, but when I borrow a one, I'm not actually making it a 10. So with this, we have to make it slightly trickier. Okay. So one thing we could do to make this slightly easier on ourselves is if I do nine minus five, right? So I do nine, one, seven, just minus the five hours for now, I get four. So it's taken four hours. Yeah, I get four, one, seven. Okay. Now I'm going to try and take away 40 minutes. How much can I take away before I have to go back down to the previous hour? Well, I can go down to zero. So I can minus 17 and that will make me, well, technically it's 18. So three, 59, and I'm taking away 18 from 40, which is going to give me, I can't do that, so we make that 3, 1, 2, 2. So it's going to be minus 22 minutes, and then my life becomes easier. 59 minus 22 gives me 3 and 37. Okay, so 3 hours and 37 minutes. Um, this previous one took us, I can't remember how many minute hours it was. Ah, that's a pain. Okay, so that's 180 plus 37. Again, I'm timesing this one by 60. That gives me 217 mins. So the difference between the length of time is 217 minus 209, which, as you can probably see, but let's go through the working out nice and slowly. Can't do 7 minus 9, so I borrow 1. 17 minus 9 is 8. 0 minus 0 is 0. 2 minus 2 is 0. So it's 8 mins difference. Here we are. For 2 marks, that's not bad. Not great, but it's not bad. Okay. So other than that, that should be fine. So I'll give you another minute to have a look at that. Again, does anyone have any questions? If you are waiting, then just read the next question, have a think about what you would do. Okay, so that should be it. So part A and B, they were pretty heavy hitters. They were quite difficult, okay? Part C, this is, uh, so with part C, it sounds difficult, but you can do this answer in a second. But you need to use your logic and your brain, which I know is scary. So Georgie lives in Ashford. She has a, to get to a meeting in Paris for 10.30. What is the time of the latest train she can get? And again, this is from Ashford. So Paris and Ashford, okay? Perfect. So... We're looking at this column now as well. Okay. Looking for the latest train. So what I'm going to do is she needs to get there for 10.30 and we want the latest possible time. So if I have a look at this, uh, these Paris meetings, I'm going to go along and say, okay, 9.17, she would be early. 9.47, she would be early. 10.17, 10, she'd be early. What about 11.17? She would be late. Okay, so she can't get the last train. Okay, so what about this one? She could take this train, but there's a problem. It doesn't actually stop at Ashford. So the only one that actually stops at Ashford is this train here. It is the 655 train. So there are two tricks they used. One, it's not the 1117 one. Two, it's actually not the one that's right before it because then she, it doesn't stop at Ashford, so she can't get that train. So the latest one she can get is 6.55. And that's it. We are done. So we did a bunch of questions and we covered a lot of content, so your brains are probably a bit fried, uh, but well done for getting through it. So just so you're aware, they will, these lessons will take place every single week on Tuesday, 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. without fail. And we'll go through the spec in order from what you are going to be doing in class. So year 10 to year 11, okay? And I'll tell you at the beginning and end of every lesson that it's going to be um, foundation or higher or both. In this case, it's both. Uh, just so you're aware, these are going to be uploaded onto YouTube. 
and I'm going to upload an edited version. The edited version is going to be trimmed down, so there's not going to be any pauses or spaces, and it's going to have like an intro and outro, okay? So if you want to look back at this, it's also going to have, you know, the chapters on YouTube. So you'll be able to click for each individual part and each individual question, okay? So I hope that make it a bit easier. So if you want to come back to this lesson, I wouldn't recommend looking at this recording on YouTube. I would recommend looking at the um, saved, the edited version afterwards, okay? But other than that, I hope you all have a wonderful evening or day or whenever you're watching this. And I'll definitely see you in the next one.